What is up guys, Liam here. I just wanted to start this video by saying Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everybody watching at home. Uh, 2020 has been a crazy year. A lot of things have happened in the world, both good and bad. Uh, I definitely accomplished a lot more than I ever thought I was going to though this year. So this week I decided to take the time and make a list of my five best hikes from 2020. I hope y'all enjoy. So this trip was one of my favorites for 2020 because one, I love Moose River Plains and any time spent in there. And two, it was just great to get out camping with my fiance and my son. It was also nice to get out and see some friends that I haven't seen in a while. Reunited with the boys, found them all at Moose River. On this trip, we learned how to cook. We heard a lot of good music. We even caught the biggest fish in Helldiver Pond. Biggest fish, Helldiver Pond. They don't get much bigger than this one right here. Overall, this trip makes the list because there's no better way to spend time in the woods than with good friends and family. This trip was amazing. Faro Lake truly is a special place. So our original plan on this trip was to hike in and grab the first lean-to we could find, but on our way in, I think it was a ranger, or somebody told us that it was super packed in there, which we kind of knew judging by the parking lot, but uh, after a couple hours of hiking and every lean-to and just about every tent site being taken, we stumbled across what we assumed was the last tent site we could find. Alright, we finally found home for the night. We did it. I think we walked maybe like five or six miles. On this overnight, I got to reconnect with my good buddy Joe, who I hadn't seen in probably years. Hi, Joe. And after the Faro Lake trip, I went on to do countless hikes with Joe. On our hike out, we even stopped to go fishing one last time and managed to catch a couple brook trout. This brookie caught Faro Lake. This trip makes the list because not only was it great to get out and explore some place new, but it was great to reconnect with an old friend. All right, so me and the cornbread, there he is, just got dropped off somewhere on Perkins Clearing Road. The French Louis Loop was one of my favorite trips of 2020 because it's always a great time on trail with my friend Corn. He is on most trips with me, and believe it or not, there's only one trip on this list that he didn't make it out for. This trip came shortly after my failed Northville Placid Trail through hike attempt, and uh, yeah, I didn't honestly know when the next time I was going to be able to get back out on trail was, and the fact that Corn and I were both free and able to do it, and my fiance said, go, take the time, I'll watch the baby, uh, just made this trip that much more special and enjoyable. Uh, really, like I said, didn't know when the next time I was going to be able to get out on trail was, and uh, this was kind of a short planned uh, surprise. On this trip, the weather was hot and humid. It is like, freaking like 80, high 80s, maybe 90s. We are sweating. The sun is beating down right on us. The trail was in rough shape. And the bugs were almost unbearable. I remember when we got to South Lake, I swam out as far into the lake as I could, probably about up to my neck and just sat there to keep the bugs off my body. Uh, but that really didn't help because they just swarmed my head. It was miserable. It was also just great to be back on the Northville Placid Trail, even if it was just for a couple miles heading northbound. We are back on the MPT for a handful of miles. Southbounders be heading down that way. We are getting off the Louie Loop. And we're going to be heading that way. We even caught some fish. This fish caught on the hot dog. Ain't the biggest, but he's something. Night one ended with Corn and I sitting by a ripping fire, just bullshitting, and it was awesome. Day two on the French Louis Loop was just as spectacular as day one. We crossed some terrain that really reminded you just how far out you really were.
I put this trip on the list because I possibly found my new favorite spot in the Adirondacks. The West Canada Lakes is so quiet, so remote, so scenic. It's just the perfect place to get away. So the Cranberry Lake 50 was an amazing trip. It was honestly one of my favorites. Um, I deleted all the footage on accident like a week after I got home. I had posted day one and then <laughs> rookie move, I accidentally deleted everything. So my through hike on the CL50 came literally days after my failed Northville Placid Trail hike. Everybody still had their bags packed and uh, we just sent it. Figured if we couldn't go nine, ten days on the Northville Placid Trail, maybe we could do four days, three nights on the Cranberry Lake 50. And it turned out to be a huge success. This trip came at a time where I didn't think I was going to be doing a lot of hiking. My fiance had just given birth to our baby, who is who was now one month old at the time. We failed our Northville Placid Trail hike, which was supposed to be my big trip. And uh, that was going to be it for who knew how long. And... Uh, she said, you know what, go out, I know how much this means to you, and uh, she let me do the Cranberry Lake 50. She watched the baby for four days by herself. She even went as far as to drop us off in Cranberry Lake. That was like seven hours round trip of drive time for her alone. So I honestly can't thank her enough for all the things that she let me do. Honestly, none of the trips on this list would have been possible without her. She has allowed me to do so much more hiking than maybe she should have let me do. And uh, for that, I love you and I thank you so much. So I am going to include some clips from my Cranberry Lake through hike. Just keep in mind that the footage that I have is just from day one. And uh, yeah, I can't believe I deleted all the videos on accident. So we started at the Cranberry Lake boat launch and we made it to East Inlet. I'm not sure exactly how many miles it is. Time to soak the feet. This trip makes the list though, because one, it was my longest time out on trail ever. Four days is, I know it doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of people, but for me to go four days out on trail is huge. I'd never done anything more than just an overnight before. And it also just confirmed my love for backpacking. Being out on trail for that many days was a huge experience that I'm so glad that I got to have. And uh, for that reason, it makes number two on my list. So this trip was the obvious choice for number one, because not only are we back out on the MPT, but we made a lot of great friends along the way that I still hike with today. Andrew, Dan, Meg, it was great hiking with you guys all the way to Paseco. And Nick, Jay, it was great hiking with you guys all the way to Silver Lake. Day one started with a six pack of PBR. Here comes corn. And ended with two liters of whiskey, courtesy of Nick and Jay. Day two started in the rain. Day two woke up at Woods Lake. Yeah, one, two years. And on our hike into Rock Lake, we found a little bottle of Fireball on the trail. Hell yeah. It's a good find. <laughs> Round and around she goes. <laughs> Social distancing. <laughs> and after hiking another short stretch, we found another bottle of Fireball on the trail. Second oh, bottle of Fireball yeah, found on the trail. This is getting intense. This is. I would be drunk by lunch. <laughs> round and round she goes, 11 o'clock. Where we'll end up, nobody knows. Come on, Dad, have a little bit. <laughs> Kill it. Once we reached Rock Lake, we had some snacks, took the boat out for a little while, and just hung out and took our time getting to Silver Lake. On our hike to Silver Lake, we ended up catching three brook trout on the way, which we had for lunch. Frying up the catch of the day. Lemon pepper trout. We ended up getting caught in a surprise thunderstorm, which pissed rain on us for about 30 minutes, just downpouring. And then the weather cleared up by the time we got to Silver Lake. A school of hikers has been spotted on the rocks. We ended night two at Canary Pond, had some dinner, took the boat out for a little while, and then hung out on the shore. I like this way better. So we found a really nice boat at Canary Pond. Fuck, I wish I had a chair. We had a very peaceful end to our last night on trail. Oh my God, that's cool. <laughs> From Canary Pond, we hiked all the way to the White House ruins and played some baseball. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> After that, we hiked all the way into Paseco and finished the road walk. 
Made it to the Paseco Airport. Ending this trip sucked. I'm pretty sure all of us wanted to continue northbound with our new trail family, but we had to say goodbye. After 41 miles, we finally got back to our car and we're gonna say goodbye to our friends behind us. Bye. Bye everyone. It was great hiking with you guys. There's probably a million reasons why this trip takes the number one spot, but if I had to sum it up, family, new friends, free booze. All right guys, thanks for watching. That has been my countdown of my hikes from 2020. If you guys like the video, don't forget to subscribe, comment your favorite part down below, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.